Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about service mesh. What is a service mesh? All right, so we've been taking this journey through modern applications. We've talked about containers and Kubernetes and ingress controllers, and now we're on to service mesh. In fact, our last video we talked about what is a service and a microservice, so now we've got to mesh it all together, right, with a service mesh. All right, so a, just, as a, just as a quick um, reminder, a service in Kubernetes is a logical abstraction for a group of pods, a deployed group of pods in a cluster, in a Kubernetes cluster, uh, and all these pods perform the same function. So that, that service is that logical abstraction of a group of pods, and we'll get to that as we draw this thing out. Um, but a service mesh is an architectural pattern for microservice deployments. Um, and the goal of the, of the service mesh, the primary goal, is, uh, is to make service-to-service -service communications secure and fast and reliable. All right, so I'm going to draw out a little bit of a picture here. So if we have in a, uh, in a you know, Kubernetes cluster, we have you know, several different uh, services. So I'll just maybe start there, um, which, and I'll maybe draw, I'll draw a couple of them. But you can imagine that there would be maybe multiple services deployed across you know, uh, multiple clusters and all that. So all this can get really big. And then if, again, if you remember, there are a series of pods uh, back here, you know, that the service is the logical abstraction of all these different pods. And if you remember as well, the pods each contain a container, right? So that's where the containers and then the orchestration of those containers with Kubernetes and all that. So you can watch all those other videos as well. Um, which, by the way, I'm going to put uh, this word proxy right here. There is a proxy device that tends to sit or sits right here on these service um, services. So in a service mesh architecture, in a service mesh deployment, you have these proxies that communicate with one another. And all of this happens on what I'll call the data plane. So here's the data plane. So all this information is communicating you know, between these proxies and then the services that are deployed inside of the Kubernetes cluster. So this is all on the data plane. And then you also have what I'm going to call the control plane of the service mesh. So that's right here above, all right? So just as a general, general picture here, we've got a Kubernetes cluster that's deployed, um, and it's got the API server, you know, it's got the ingress controller that we talked about. But these are those services that are deployed within the Kubernetes cluster that have the pods, that have containers in the pods. Um, so now in a service mesh, you've got these proxies that are handling the you know, communication between the services. Um, so a service mesh typically is responsible for functions that include routing traffic among these applications, the containerized applications. Um, they serve as the interface for defining uh, mutual TLS, which I'll just put, um, uh, I'll put, I'll just put over here on the side, maybe MTLS, mutual TLS, which by the way, uh, mutual TLS, the primary function of that is to ensure that the, that the parties at each end of this network connection, so each of these services or each of these proxies, um, are who they claim to be, right? So that's, you've, you've got the TLS and all that with certificates and private keys and all that. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the primary, that's the function of mutual TLS is to ensure that each party is who they claim to be. Um, and that's a big deal when it comes to service mesh, right? So uh, the, the service mesh itself, this whole, you know, uh, framework um, functions to improve the security and the observability and the traffic control of these distributed systems, right? So this, while this is a simple little diagram with maybe one Kubernetes cluster, as you blow this up and get really get big, like these big enterprise deployments, then that's where the service mesh is going to become more, you know, more, more necessary, as it were, right? So the service mesh, what it can do is it can offload functions like um, TLS, which is like this mutual TLS stuff, uh, load balancing. So, you know, as, as traffic needs to, needs to bounce, you know, a, around different services or different applications, uh, then the service mesh can handle that. Um, so what that also does is it frees up developers from having to implement this security feature or the service availability and all those uh, things that service mesh handles. The developers don't have to do that in each application that they deploy in this containerized and this microservices deployment, right? So service mesh is really nice for that as you get large. Um, service meshes, I'll mention, 
also range in focus from very small, very focused, to extremely large with comprehensive sets of network and Kubernetes cluster management. So now if you have multiple clusters and all that, um, and then everywhere in between. So, if, so service meshes can go very small to extremely large. Um, so like I said before, in this service mesh architecture, the, the microservices within a deployment um, or within a, within a cluster interact with, with each other via these proxies that sit right here with, you know, kind of kind of right beside the service, as it were. Um, and then the security and the communication rules and all that behind these different interactions here are directed through the control plane. So you can imagine the control plane sits here and directs all the operations or all this, uh, you know, communication. Um, and then the actual data is flowing here. So the control here, the data here. And so a developer can configure and add policies and all that at the control plane level. So that makes that nice. All right, so I wanted to kind of build this out just a little bit more. So if you have the data plane here, I'm gonna put like a big, maybe a big box around the, the data plane portion. And then you've got the control plane, of course. Um, I'm gonna draw an even bigger box, right? Over this whole thing. Um, you know, we love to draw boxes around here. Okay, so let's say that this entire thing is the K8 uh, cluster, right? Cluster. And K8, of course, is Kubernetes. Watch that video if you didn't, uh, if you haven't already. So that's a, that, that's a good introduction to Kubernetes. All right, so you've got the Kubernetes environment here, the K8 uh, cluster. Um, and then uh, maybe I'll put over here on the side, you've got the ingress controller, right? Which we talked about that. Ingress controller, so I'll just put like that. Uh, and then you also have the, uh, the API server. I'll just put it right here. So the API server for, uh, you know, for Kubernetes, right? So here is all of that. Okay, so in a, in a deployment, you'll have the API server that, you know, manages uh, kind of everything within the Kubernetes cluster. And so you've got your DevOps teams out here. So I'll just put DevOps and they're doing their, you know, continuous, uh, you know, deployment and CI CD kind of stuff. And they're going to interact with this API server. And then you have users that are going to be accessing your applications that are deployed via this microservices, Kubernetes, you know, uh, deployment, right? And so they're going to come into, because remember the ingress controller is the single point of entry and exit for traffic into the cluster for Kubernetes. So they're going to be coming, interacting with the ingress controller. <clears throat> All right. So this is a, a bit more of a, of a uh, you know, of a diagram when it comes to service mesh. Um, and then also you can have, or, or you do have in a service mesh, what I'll call the observability or maybe visibility, uh, because remember that's the uh, visibility uh, plane over here, right? Because we need to make sure that we can see everything and make sure that we know what's going on within all this craziness. And again, while this is a simple diagram, you can, you can imagine in like an enterprise deployment, it gets really, really complicated. Okay, so then these services uh, can, can start to interact or send data down to the, what I'll call the visibility plane. And this is, or like the observability plane. And these are tools like Grafana or Prometheus or Open Tracing or things like that that allow you visibility into this entire situation, right? This entire service mesh. Um, okay, so that's a, that's a bit more complete of a picture of what could be going on here, right? Um, okay, so just to, just to point out as well, you don't have to have a service mesh deployment uh, within a Kubernetes you know, deployment within a microservices architecture, uh, but you certainly can. And as you grow and, you know, have a need for more visibility, more, you know, the, the mutual TLS uh, capabilities, those kinds of things, then service mesh is going to become something that you really need to think about. And so I'm not going to write them all up here, but there's six different things to think about that we would encourage you to, to look at in terms of deciding, do you need a service mesh or not? All right. So the first one is, are you fully invested in Kubernetes for your production environment? And if you are, then that's a good thing, or, or that's a thing to think about, and that means that, yes, you need to, to think about service mesh. The second one is you require a zero-trust production environment, and you need mutual TLS between services. So I'm not going deep into, into zero-trust in this video, but mutual TLS and zero-trust really go hand-in-hand hand when you talk about microservices deployments. Uh, that's why this mutual TLS is such a big deal. But if you require that zero trust and you need mutual TLS, 
then service mesh is something to think about. Um, the third one that I would mention is your application is complex in both the number of services and the depth of services, right? So those are, uh, that's something to think about as well in terms of service mesh. So again, as it gets more complicated, more complex, that's where service mesh is gonna start to come in. The fourth one is you have a mature production CICD pipeline right up here, the DevOps guys feeding into this whole thing, all right? Um, and I understand mature depends on your organization, but if you consider your organization, your production pipeline mature, uh, then that's where service message is, is gonna uh, be helpful. Um, the fifth one is you're deploying frequently to production at least once every single day, right? Um, if you don't, then it's not that you don't need service mesh, but you may want to think about, you know, do you need service mesh or not? Uh, but certainly if you are, then that's another, it's another checkbox in the, hey, we, we really need to think about service mesh column. And then the last one, number six, is your DevOps team is, is ready to go and start using the right tools for ultra modern app development, right? So these are those tools in the service mesh. So again, just as a, just as kind of a, a general, um, you know, uh, approach to this, the service mesh is when, when your microservices deployment, uh, your architecture in Kubernetes and all that is getting very complex, it's getting very large and you need to have visibility and security, um, availability, all that over this entire huge, you know, enterprise deployment um, with, with lots of things going on, service mesh could very likely be your answer. So this is a bit about what it is, how it's constructed, how it works together, um, and so, uh, so anyway, just wanted to, to give you a bit of an overview on what is a service mesh and, uh, and why it's important. So, hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.